As time passes, more and more countries are getting less and less afraid of Putin. Such as, for example, America, which in the very beginning of this war was very hesitant to acknowledge that they were sending missiles to Ukraine, and now they're saying that they will help Ukraine to take back Crimea. And as the Western weapons drama unfolds right in front of our eyes, we're entering the next crucial and potentially the final stage of this war. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, Nezers? It's the Russian dude. Let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage. And our first video is the very first Bayraktar drone, Kizilelma, which is using Ukrainian engines. And among its basic characteristics is that it can carry a cargo of up to 1500 kilograms, the maximum speed of 900 kilometers per hour, the range of 930 kilometers, the altitude is 10668 meters, and the time where can this drone operate is 5 hours. And speaking about the drones, Ukrainians came up with the new technique how they can catch Russian drones, as you can see from this picture. And what you are basically looking at is that a Russian drone simply got caught in this net. In addition to that, right here we have the most recent report by the Air Force of Ukraine, which shows us how many Russian aerial targets they were able to intercept recently. And as you can see, in addition to two missiles and one drone, Ukrainians were able to intercept two fighter jets, Su-25, and one helicopter, Ka-52. So basically, yes, Ukrainian air defense is getting much better than it used to be, but in order for them to achieve the complete dominance, they still need these Western weapons and military vehicles. And we will talk about this drama with the supply of this machinery in just several seconds. But for now, you might remember that uh, last week, Russia started actively deploying air defense systems inside Moscow. And well, right here we have the map of alleged locations of these air defense systems inside the capital of Russia, and as you can see, they are mainly focused to protect Kremlin and Red Square, the residents of the government of Russia, from all sides. And I wonder if there's still no panic inside Kremlin. But okay, and now let's cross the border and let's go back to Ukraine. And as you can see from this picture, the ex-Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, has visited Borodyanka. And after this, he made a stop in the capital of Ukraine, Kiev, to speak with President Zelensky. Among other things, they were also talking about how the UK can help Ukraine even more. And probably even about which weapons and military vehicles can be supplied. Because, I mean, let's be honest. The heroism and self-dedication of Ukrainian defenders at this point is legendary, but in the modern 21st century it is getting extremely complicated to win wars and battles without having modern weapons and military equipment. And as more and more countries warm up to Ukraine and stop being afraid of Putin, sooner or later this life-changing machinery will start pouring into Ukraine. And without a doubt, this will be a turning point in this war. And if you don't want to miss these events as soon as they start happening, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and participate in polls from time to time. And so yeah, speaking about the weapon deliveries, some countries started already showing such incredible levels of support to Ukraine, which haven't been thought possible until now. Such as, for example, Estonia, which gave to Ukraine all of its 155mm howitzers. And according to the Estonian ambassador to Ukraine, Kaimo Kusk, the reason for this is to show the rest of the world that there are absolutely no excuses not to help Ukraine. In addition to that, Morocco, the very first African country, gave approximately 20 of its tanks, T-72B, to Ukraine. And then, as you can see right here, we have a video from Poland of an extremely huge convoy of American Bradley armored personnel carriers, which are allegedly being transported right now into Ukraine. And even though, according to President Zelensky, Ukraine is extremely grateful for every single tank and armored personnel carrier that Western countries send to Ukraine, Unfortunately, most likely this will not be enough to fight against the fleet of thousands of similar military vehicles that Russia has. 
But one of the main responsibilities of these supplies is that they do an incredible morale boost to Ukrainian soldiers, who feel that the rest of the world is behind their backs. And then Germany and its Chancellor Olaf Scholz was also heavily criticized for not giving Leopard tanks to Ukraine. But then, as you can see from this video, the German forces started relocating its Patriot air defense systems to Poland and then closer to the borders with Ukraine. And their main responsibilities will be to protect their humanitarian points as well as the eastern border of NATO. And so yeah, as you can see, recently I'm becoming more open to show the uncensored footage once again, as my demonetization issue is slowly being resolved. But if you still want to support my work and in return get access to hundreds of photos and videos that did not make into my daily episodes, please consider joining my Patreon. All the useful links can be found down below. Alright, and before I talk about this brand new activity of Russians in the Zaporozhye region, let me give you a very quick update from the east and from the north of Ukraine. And as you can see from this picture, which came to us from Kiev region, Ukrainians are digging trenches, building bunkers and other defense structures. But as we move more to the east, right here we have a picture of Russians launching one of their attacks. And as you can see, the Russian soldiers are just literally running into the fight without having the support from any of its military vehicles. Pretty much exactly the same tactics, which was used approximately hundreds of years ago. Which only once again supports the previously made claims that Russia is winning battles with the numbers of people, not with the superior military tactics. And then according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians continue their offensive operations along Svatove Kriminna Highway, and at the same time obviously their main directions of attacks were along Bakhmut, Solidar, Avdiivka and Donetsk city. One of the heaviest combat activities which has been reported recently happened around Krasnohora, and as you can see right here, Russians looks like trying to encircle this settlement. And as we move to the west, a missile strike by Russians has been reported in Kramatorsk. And right now, let's briefly take a look at this map, which shows us the changes in territorial control. And right here, we can see that Russians captured more land next to Vadyane and Opotne. As we move to the north, we can see that Ukrainians were able to take a little bit back of its own land to the west of Novoselivka. As we move closer to Bakhmut, we can see the changes in territorial control, which happened around Klishinivka. And then speaking about previously mentioned Krasnohora, we can see that Russians advanced a little bit to the north of this settlement. And in addition to that, Russians expanded their invasion to the north of Solidar. And ultimately, as we go along Svatove Kriminna road, we can see that Russians also got a little bit closer to the Ukrainian territories to the west of Ploshanka. Alright, and now as promised, let me give you a very quick update from the south, where recently, reportedly, a missile struck a residential building located in Nova Kachovka. As we move to Zaporozhye region, Russians attempted an assault against Shirbaki, a small village, but this attack was repelled by Ukrainians, and in addition to that, several Russian armored personnel carriers were destroyed. And then, as you can see from this map, there is a brand new activity of Russians in the Zaporozhye region, and according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, their main focus of their attacks was against Orihiv and Huliaipole. And as for now, the majority of these attacks, especially around Huliaipole, are being repelled by Ukrainians. So yes, it does look like that Russia already relocated enough forces from Kherson region and Crimea to Zaporozhye, because that's why we see this new offensive of Russians recently. But in addition to that, according to the representative of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, Vadim Skibitsky, the reason for this relative partial success of Russians recently, it is because they do learn on their own mistakes. What he says is that the longer this war goes on, the more experienced Russian soldiers become, which is pretty much exactly the same thing I was talking about in one of my recent special episodes. Previously the attacks of Russians were pretty much random and unexpected, and they were only hoping for this element of surprise. But right now, as Ukrainians are getting more and more prepared in terms of defense, this is when Russians have to come up with something more extraordinary, rather than just going forward and attacking. 
In addition to that, they also start learning the areas which are protected by Ukraine air defense systems, that is why they try to avoid these territories. And to make things even worse, do you remember all these claims by the Russian authorities in relatively near past? That that's it, the partial mobilization is over, there'll be no another wave. And I mean, <laughs> you know the style of Russian propaganda, the more they say about something that is not going to happen, the more likely this thing will actually happen. And so recently we have this new statement of the press secretary of Russia, Dmitry Peskov, who said that the partial mobilization does not only include the mobilization itself, it also includes other activities. And for this reason, the order of Putin of this mobilization is still active. So, does this all mean that we have potentially another round of mobilization coming up in Russia in the near future? And at this point I think it's very hard to tell, so just let's wait and see. But according to some highest government and military representatives of Ukraine, such as for example once again Vadim Skibitsky, Russia has everything done, everything prepared in order to start another second round of partial mobilization. And the main reason for this, as he thinks, is that this spring, or maximum this summer, this is when Russia will launch its ultimate, massive and most likely final offensive. And because of this, Russia will need to assemble all of its resources it got, because in case they lose once again, this will be truly a devastating blow to Putin himself. According to Skibitsky, the most active battle zones will be most likely in the east of Ukraine, probably in the south and very highly unlikely in the north of Ukraine, from the territory of Belarus. In addition to that, the western media also started to acknowledge that this war right now is being transitioned into the next and very crucial stage. The main assumption is still the same, that the main combat activities will be happening this spring, and at the same time that the western weapons and military vehicles will play an incredibly important role in the success of Ukraine. But even though this change might sound scary, in fact, this will be a much more beneficial for Ukraine, as more and more countries will be less and less afraid of Putin and they will start showing the support to Ukraine. Such as for example once again America, which I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, which in the beginning of this war was even hesitant to acknowledge the fact that they sent Stinger anti-aircraft missiles to Ukraine. And now they're saying that they will help Ukraine to retake Crimea. So pretty much yes, since 2014 when Russia illegally annexed the peninsula, America always acknowledged that Crimea is a part of Ukraine. But whenever this war started back in February 24th, 2022, America was pretty hesitant to send weapons to Ukraine because they were afraid that they might use them against the territory of Russia including against Crimean Peninsula. And now these hesitations seem to start to fade away. As for now, according to some highest US government officials, America will be providing the support to Ukraine to retake the peninsula, even though it increases the risks of the escalation. And one of the main reasons for this, according to them, it is because Crimea was this sanctuary that Russia used to launch their attacks against the territory of Ukraine. So pretty much yes, right now Crimea is still internationally recognized as a part of Ukraine, but in reality what do we have? It kinda became the Russian military territory. And besides providing the territory for Russians, which is pretty close to the territory of Ukraine, to launch their attacks, Crimea also plays a huge role in the Russian military tactics as being the main logistical hub in the south. And so it looks like that Americans realized that Ukrainians in fact do not need to retake the entire peninsula, they only need to show that this is quite possible. And as soon as Ukrainians start showing the real threat to Putin's beloved Crimea, this is when potentially Russia can be forced into negotiations. And exactly with this idea, it became so much easier for America to show the actual military support to Ukraine, 
which started back in the days with, for example, something like HIMARS, and now these armored personnel carriers, Bradley. Because one of the greatest achievements of Ukraine in this still ongoing war is that they were able to show the rest of the world that Putin is not as scary as he seems. And one of the main ways how these vehicles can help is that even though these are armored personal carriers, they can take out Russian tanks with guided missiles. And potentially, whenever Ukrainians are properly trained to use Bradleys, this is when they can resume their counteroffensive in the south and eventually, hopefully, separate Crimea from the rest of occupied Ukraine. And then, as soon as Ukrainians bring HIMARS closer to the borders with Peninsula, it will become in its fire range. And this will most certainly scare Putin. At the same time, some Ukrainian officials, they fear that their country will not be able to survive long being under constant bombardments by Russians. That is why they have to come up with something radical and quick, something as taking back Crimea. But as you can already see, probably they will not even need to recapture the entire peninsula. They only need to show the intent to do it. And even if this will not force Putin to talk, because in that case I don't know what else will, this will at least most certainly switch the attention of the Russian forces from some other more intense combat zones, such as the east of Ukraine. So, pretty much yes, according to many sources, we might see some significant changes in this war in the next several weeks. And so, yes, once again, if you don't want to miss any of these updates, just please subscribe to my channel, it only takes one click. And if you want to support my work financially, please consider becoming my channel member, use the PayPal link or become my Patreon, where you receive early access to the additional content. All the other useful links can be found to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi, and see you tomorrow.